Hey everybody, welcome back to Jamia's Promo, and today we'll take a look at the 13 differences between the Samsung One UI 2.0 versus Samsung One UI 2.1. Now, as of right now, the 2.1 is pre-installed and running on any of the Galaxy S20 devices, as well as the Galaxy Z Flip. Now, if you're curious on when it'll come to your device, 2.1 will be pushed all the way back to the Galaxy S9 series, which means that if you have the S9 series, the Note 9 series, the S10 series, or the Note 10 series, you will get the 2.1. My guess is it will be pushed out and updated right around early summer or mid summer. So taking a look at the first change that you'll see, we'll head inside of the camera. And the first one that you'll notice is when you go and switch between your different lenses for the 0.5, for the 1X, for the 5X, or the 0.5, the 1X, and the 2X, is you'll notice that all the other preset zooms will also be on the bottom, making it just a little bit easier, a little bit faster, something that is just precise. So if you wanted the four times zoom, 10 times zoom and so on and so forth. So this will be one of the changes is just having more of these little icons on the bottom that once you tap on one of those, you'll be able to see them pop up. You can see here that on the regular 2.0, none of those pop up, but on 2.1, you have all those options. The second change that you might see is that if you do a pinch to zoom, or if you just simply swipe over to your Bixby home, it is now actually called the Bixby daily. This is how you'd be able to turn it on. You can turn it off. Uh, and then once you go and you check it out, you're going to see how everything is kind of set up a little bit different. You're going to have different menu settings and everything else. Uh, but because there's a lot of my personal information inside of the Samsung daily, we won't really go through everything here, but there is going to be an update and it just kind of brings everything together and, and really just forms it for you a little bit better than the Bixby Home did. The third change that you'll notice is going to be what you saw at the very beginning of this video, and that is that display settings, especially for dark mode, it is just a little bit different. You know, the toggles are in different locations. Um, if you scroll to the very top, this is what it looks like here on the 2.1. It's actually done with images right here, letting you know what it's gonna look like, and, and you can just change it through there. With this one over here, it's just with a simple, boring toggle. Uh, so it's just kinda, I don't know. I'm not really a huge fan of that little toggle. You can actually go inside of it and you can see what it looks like you can go inside of your your uh, dark mode settings here so both of the screens are going to be slightly different uh, and inside of here is where you can actually apply it to the wallpaper as well uh, and actually on this note i'm going to point out one more area that you can actually see this that it's a little bit different on both of them so if you go through your dark mode settings this is where you can apply it to the wallpaper now when you actually go through your normal settings or let's say that you just press and hold on the screen and you click on wallpaper, uh, you're gonna notice that right over here, it has the toggle to apply dark mode to wallpaper, which just makes a lot of sense. When you go right over here, you hit on wallpaper, you're not gonna have that option sitting right over here. So that means you have to go through the other settings that I just showed you, which is dark mode to actually get to this little toggle. Now, really the other way that you can get into this, some people, they don't press and hold on the display to change wallpaper. You actually go through your settings and click right there. When you click on wallpaper, this is where you can change it. And again, you have that toggle popped up. So if you want to apply it on the old version here, which is the Samsung One UI 2.0, go inside of your dark mode settings. The fourth change that you'll notice is that when you go inside of your recent app menu, if you tap on the application icon, it gives you a little menu of what you're able to do with the app, you know, such as multi-window and things like that. Well, on the Samsung 2.0, uh, or the Samsung One UI 2.0, this one is called Lock This App. It's a way that you're able to save this application into your RAM. So this way when you hit on Close All, it'll actually be stored there for faster opening and loading. Uh, for the 2.1, it's actually called Keep Open for Quick Launching. It's really the exact same thing. So this was one of the questions I had in my past video where I talked about saving your applications to your RAM. Someone asked if it was the same thing as lock this app, and it actually is. Anytime that you're done with the application and it's okay for it to close, when you hit on close all, you can just tap that little icon and it goes away. Change number five that you'll notice is that when you first get your phone or when you first update to 2.1, when you scroll through your applications, I did place mine inside of the Samsung folder because I like to, you know, bulk things together. Uh, but there's a thing that's called AR zone. AR zone is a place that you have all of your AR things in one spot. You know, on 2.0, you'd have to go inside your camera, go over into more. You have Bixby vision, AR emoji, everything's going to be kind of in there. It's all kind of spread out a little bit, but here you have it all in one menu, your AR doodle, the AR emoji camera. So you tap on any of these and it really opens up that mode or that feature that you're able to do any of these things with. 
So your 3D scanner is there, you can play with makeup, you have quick measure, your uh, emoji studio, the sticker, you can really customize a bunch of things, do many things that you weren't able to do before. So if you actually make your own AR emoji, you can actually move your finger across the screen, which I'll show this in a later video, uh, but you can make your person walk. It's actually really cool. So they really expanded on the AR features. The next change that you'll notice is that when you go inside of your camera, you'll really notice it if you are somebody who likes to take a lot of selfies, but you want to go inside of your settings. Uh, and before you go into the settings, one thing I do like to mention with any of these videos is make sure you put it on photo. If you put it on any other shooting mode, some of these settings will be grayed out. So inside of the settings, you have this one right here that's called smart selfie angle. It's a way that it automatically switches to wide angle selfie if there's more than two people or two or more people in the frame. So let's say that you're, you know, inside your camera and you're on a, the, the selfie, the front facing camera, uh, it'll automatically be at the one X. And if another person comes in the frame or more than one, it will switch to the wide angle for you. It's actually really nice. It's one of those cool little small features that is a part of the 2.1 update and it should be moving right over here because we have the shooting mode here for wide angle. Uh, they just have to place that in for the 2.1 update. Now these next two features are ones that I'm super excited about. These were actually the first two things I tested once I unboxed the S20. These were also part of the Z Flip. I thought maybe they were just a part of the brand new phones, but again, it's a part of the 2.1 update. Now that's when you go through these different quick settings on the top. Now you can notice that this phone does not have it, but soon it will. It is the quick share and the music share. Now these ones, technically these older phones, or I should say uh, the Samsung One UI 2.0, which is still newer, phones, they're still capable of doing this. It's just that they're set up in a screen, a menu that's a little bit different and easier to use. Music share is a way that you're able to have any of your Bluetooth devices you're connected to easily be basically transferred over to your friend. So if you're at your house, you're listening to something on your Bluetooth speaker, once you turn this on, they turn it on, then they're able to find this Bluetooth speaker you're already connected to, and they can take it over from their own phone. You technically have two phones connected to the exact same Bluetooth source, which is just fantastic and amazing. It's literally multi-device connection, and it's your phone and another phone going to the same Bluetooth at the same time. When you hit on play, theirs will go on pause. When they hit on play, yours will also go on pause. Now the next one that is uh, that is brand new right over here is gonna be Quick Share. So Quick Share is a way that it uses, you know, Wi-Fi direct to send large files. So if I have a bunch of things I wanna share with another person, you just go inside of Quick Share and this person right over here just needs to have their, you know, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth turned on as well. They're gonna find each other and then basically send really anything and everything they want. It's a way that you're able to send it to either your contacts or everybody. So if you're on a plane and there's another person with a Samsung phone and you wanted to share them something and they weren't even a part of your contacts, you're able to send it to maybe the person right next to you without even sharing phone numbers. So like I said from before, you know, sharing large files to another person that's not even your contact, it's actually really easy on the 2.0, but Samsung just wanted to put it in its own little menu, pretty much like the AirDrop clone. Now this next change is actually really cool. It's a little similar to to live transcribe live transcribe is a way that it uses its own microphones it'll pick up your voice and transcribe everything on the screen this one's actually one that's called live caption and it's also built into your little volume rocker so you have a thing that is called live caption no matter what you're listening to as long as there's media being played it will actually put the captions on your screen so this is really going to come in handy if maybe uh the person next to you in bed is going to is, is sleeping but you also still wanted to watch a video you need to catch up with jimmy's promo with the latest tips and tricks and tutorials it'll it'll place the words right here uh you can also place it in, in landscape mode, it's gonna sit right there. Uh, and as I said from before, this is where it comes in handy if somebody's laying next to you. I have it on mute, but because there is media being played, there is audio in the phone, it's picking up all of the words and it's it's actually really cool. You know, let's say maybe you're at work or you're at school, you shouldn't be watching videos, but if you needed to, uh, maybe you needed uh, to another way to study, you're at a library, you can't listen to anything loud, uh, you can have your captions on and it's actually pretty, pretty accurate when you actually look at all the words. And if you also listen to the video, you will notice that it does a really good job. The 11th change that you might notice or you might not notice is when you go inside of your settings, you're gonna scroll 
all the way down to your accessibility. And there is a way that you're able to visibly enhance your screen if you are somebody who needs to have things just a little bit larger. So when you go inside of here and then you go to the very bottom underneath the visibility uh, area, you have a thing called screen zoom. So it's not really just only changing the size of the text, it's actually changing everything on the screen, either larger or smaller. Now in the old 2.0, you have only three settings. Uh, this one will give you five. So you're gonna have one that's kind of in between, you know, what you see there, um, it makes it pretty nice. So this is basically all that they're really adding in is these dots right here, going in between what was already set there to from the smallest to the largest. Change number 12 is if you go inside of your gallery, let's say that you took an image, uh, but you need it to be resized. They made it to be extremely easy. So let's say that we just take a look at this image here and we take a look at this image here. So this was actually a pretty cool image I took with the 30 times zoom and it did a really good job at night. Uh, but if you hit on that little edit button, then you hit the edit button down there. On the top right hand side, you're gonna notice that you have this option right here called resize image. Now with the resize image, it's a way that you're able to simply resize the full image, not have to take away from anything over here, but you, you can resize it and it saves it as a new image. So if you needed to upload this somewhere, put it on a website, put it in a text or do something, but you need it to be maybe 60% smaller, when you hit on done, it will actually save that as basically a save as. So you can see that both of these are the exact same image. Now, when you do scroll up, you're gonna notice that the size will be a little bit different. So you have, you know, that three megabytes, move it right over here, you're gonna have 441 KB. So it is quite a bit different, but we did, you know, bring it down by like 60%. Now change number 13, we're gonna go right back inside of the gallery. So this one is the last tip in this video. Now, when you go inside of uh, the photos, the, the pictures tab, so not just the albums, but when you go to the pictures tab, you're gonna notice one more option sitting there. This is a way that you're able to group images together. So if you took uh, multiple images at the exact same time almost, like uh, within a few seconds of each other, uh, they're also at the exact same location, they will actually bunch them together. So down over here, you can see that there's one, two, three, four, five, six images. And when I clump them together, you're gonna notice it goes right on down. Uh, but you also see a small image right there, which means that there's more than one image. Now it kind of stores it together because I took these two images within just a few seconds of each other. So it wanted to group them together. Uh, so it's just kind of a way to either declutter your gallery um, and it does a pretty good job. So you can see that there's quite a few up here and then it took it down uh, by like at least two or three images uh, right there. There's a few, a couple of them are booked right here. Uh, and, and really they are their own images. They just happen to be categorized together. But I hope that you guys have liked this video. If you guys did, please give this thing a huge thumbs up. Don't forget to hit on subscribe. Subscribe right over here in the very bottom left hand side. And if you like this video, then more than likely you'll also like this video. And I'll see you guys later.